Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Boom, doo doo Boom, doo doo Hey, Mrs. Close the window, darling. Yes, and... It's cool this morning, doesn't it? I just, just let Bluff out the back door. He said it was going to be another nice day. Oh, don't you wish you didn't have to go into New York? Don't even mention it. Frankly, I don't see why you have to be an architect all the way in New York on a morning like this. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I have to be an architect in New York on a morning like this mainly because somebody has to make some money to keep this family going. Yes, especially now that we have this house. Mm. And speaking of money, our new maid's coming this morning. I think I'm following. I'm afraid we won't need any money for the new maid. It's wonderful how cheap they are when they don't take the job. <laughs> Hardly costs a penny not to hire a maid. All they ask is their car fare. Nice of them, isn't it? Very, very. Uh, throw me a pair of socks, darling, would you? Where are they? In the drawer. Where do you think? You really need a maid, don't you? I seem to dress without help. Here you are. Catch. Nice brown woolly pair. The way you throw. What's the matter with it? I'm standing here by the bed, not over by the window. So I don't throw straight. I'll never let you play all my baseballs. I am heartbroken. David, do you think she'll stay? Who? 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 Honestly, sometimes I feel as if I'm talking to thin air. Gertrude, the new maid. Oh, oh, Gertrude. Answer me. Do you think she will like it here and stay? I don't know. She hasn't come yet. I like it here. Goop. <laughs> when she does come, do you think she'll like it? I don't know. We'll have to ask her nicely if she will. I'm going right on talking as if you weren't here at all. Mm, that should be interesting. Personally, I think she's going to be marvelous. Who? And she's going to love cats and dogs. She'll probably be terrified by them. Who? <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right, now we're Eve out. Almost. It's settled once and for all that we're both talking about Gertrude, the prodigal maid. Shake. Shake. I've been thinking about her all night. You must be exhausted. I would be if I hadn't slept so well. You know, she isn't really a maid at all. No? No. She's different. I mean, she's not, not, not a professional. No. She's only a widow who's coming to help us out. Only a widow oh, to help you. us out. Dope. Go on, talk as if I'm not here. Gertrude is a neighbor, and that's the way I'm going to treat her. I only hope that's the way she'll treat you. And no heavy cleaning, David. We mustn't ask that. Farthest thing from my mind. Then it has been on your mind? It has not. Then how could it be the farthest thing? Mm. Well, every talent helps. Gertrude is going to stay if I have to do all the cooking and Mama has to darn all the socks. If that happens, I go. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now, this is the way it's going to be. You'll pretend to be Gertrude, David, and I'll pretend to be me. You'll pretend to be you? Yes. Well, don't strain yourself. Oh. Now, am I a mousy Gertrude or a mountainous mm, Gertrude? A little, little bit of both, just to be on the safe side. All right. Her voice sounded mountainous. I'm ready. <laughs> Come in, Gertrude. Now, I want you to feel completely at home, Gertrude. Consider this is your house. Too small to be my house. Oh, don't worry about that, Gertrude. My husband is a simply marvelous architect. And he's adding to the house all the time. Just tell him what you want, and we'll build it. I want a glass and closed shower and my breakfast in bed. <laughs> you can have all your meals in bed, Gertrude. My husband himself will be happy to serve you. I don't like your husband. Goodbye. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't like him either. <laughs> I'll send him away if you'll stay. Hey, look at the time. Oh, oh, don't mind that, Clark. It's not right. How do you know? It's fast. It wasn't yesterday. Well, that was yesterday. I know it's fast because I put it ahead. I suppose you uh, had an excellent reason. I did. I put the clock ahead so I'd never be late again. Oh. I know how you hate me to be late. Now, is that an excellent reason or isn't it? Well, um... Come over here. 
I'll tell you. I don't trust you. Come here, I said. I'm here. Oh, David, it must have been an excellent reason. Now, come on. Whether it's early or late, I want my breakfast. So do I. I've worked up a ferocious appetite impersonating Gertrude. As soon as I put on my coat... David, what time do you think she'll come? Oh, about one o'clock. One o'clock. Mm. Knowing Gertrude as well as I do, she probably doesn't like getting up early. Then she'll probably leave at two o'clock because she doesn't like staying late. But I don't care, even if she leaves. Hey, you're not giving up so easily, are you? No, but I don't have any false hopes. Then I won't be disappointed. You'll miss a lot of fun that way. It's worth it. We've had so many false alarms with maids. Now, let me tell you something. What, David? I don't care if we never get a maid. Well, that's a fine thing to say. You're the one who's been insisting. I still don't care. Because that's the only way we'll get one. Now, come on, to breakfast. Oh, David, I'd be lost without you. Not at all. You'd manage perfectly. But don't ever get lost, see? Never, I promise. I'm starving. And I am ready. I'm eight steps ahead of you. <laughs> I'm not going to have much time for breakfast. I don't care how much you have to hurry to get to the station. You eat your breakfast. You and breakfast. You have a fixation on eating breakfast. It comes from fixing them. Ooh. Ooh. One of these days, I'm going to make you eat your pun. <laughs> for breakfast? <laughs> Claudia, wait a minute. What's the matter? Do you, uh, do you smell something burning? I smell something cooking. Bacon. Honestly, that mother of mine, she had to get up and start cooking breakfast. That's what we get for loitering. Loitering? We were discussing something very important. Yeah, we're loitering now. Let's tiptoe into the kitchen and surprise her. And after we surprise her, I'm going to take her over my knee. <laughs> She's supposed to be a guest here. Mama doesn't know what being a guest means. Will you look at that? She set the table, too. <gasps> Wait till I give her a piece of my mind. Can you spare it? Mama, what do you mean? What do you... Mama, what do you mean by coming down here and cooking? Oh, hello. You, Mrs. Norton, good morning. David, this is... Just call um... me Gertrude. The whole name's Gertrude Hanson, but just call me Gertrude. Go... The back door opened, so I just came in. You ought to lock doors at night. I... Well, we're, we're, we're awfully glad you're here. That's good. Isn't it, David? Say yes, something. yes. Quite a surprise. Well, I figure as I get started early, I finish early. Oh, so that's it. Then I can go home, clean my own house, get back here in time for dinner. Oh, sounds like an awfully full day, doesn't it, David? Mm, it, uh... It does to me. Gertrude never minds a lot of work. She likes to keep busy. When my husband was alive, I was busy all the time. Men do need an awful lot of care, don't they? Your experience has been so widespread, hasn't it, Mrs. Norton? Very extensive, my experience. Gertrude, we hope you're going to like it here. I'm not fussy. Now, you better set right down, or the cereal's going to be overcooked. The bacon dried out, the muffins burned, and the eggs hard-boiled. I dropped yes. them when I heard you moving round upstairs. <clears throat> Gertrude, that's, um, that's really a great deal more than I usually eat for breakfast. I Come along, to... David, come along. We'll sit right down in the dining room and get started. But, but darling, I only... Yeah, for everything but... sounds delicious, Gertrude. Just bring it in whenever you're ready. Come on, David. You're a man, Mr. Norton. you got to eat a decent breakfast. I used to feed my husband a great big breakfast every day. Rock of ages, quit from me. Oh, where, oh, where is her husband now? Hush up, David. I'm not going to eat eggs and cereal and bacon David, and the... please, today. Just today. Oh, all right. But just today. Thanks. What do you think of her? I am bowled over. Coming so early and starting right off to... Here's your orange juice <clears throat> and some stewed prunes on the side for Mr. Norton. You love stewed prunes, don't you, David? Do I? Yes. Yes, I, I guess I will. Yes, I brought will. breakfast up to your mother on a tray. Oh, that was certainly thoughtful of you. She sort of didn't want to put me to the trouble, but Gertrude don't mind a little extra trouble. <laughs> Poor Mama. She hates trays. <laughs> I'll bet she doesn't know what hit her. Eat your prunes. Uh, 
I don't even know what hit me, and I've seen her. Eat your prunes. You want to offend Gertrude? Just this morning. Now, don't ever take advantage of me again. David, do you think she'll stay? Well, she certainly seems to be cutting out a niche for herself, <laughs> a, a nice large one. It's not a bit like what I expected. I thought she'd be so. Here's of... the cereal and the cream. Or do you like your eggs and bacon first? Some folks do. Well, this is fine, Gertrude. Thank you. Scream when you want me. Scream. I'm making some dough for a rhubarb pie. Rhubarb. I hate rhubarb. <laughs> You'll like it and eat it. I'll eat it all right, but I don't promise you I'll like it. Well, that doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> well, that's the last of the prunes, thank heavens. You look better already. Well, I yes, don't you feel do. Better. Claudia always said you should eat a good breakfast. This isn't good. This is terrible. Mrs. Norton, I wrote a list out of the things you'll need. When you go downtown, you can pick them up. Or would you like I should telephone? I usually go down to the market. That's okay with Gertrude. This afternoon, I'll start on the laundry. Then tomorrow, I can do the ironing. Next week, I'll start putting the house in a regular schedule. Well, you just let me know. From now on, you don't have to worry about a thing. Leave it all to Gertrude. I certainly do appreciate that. Well, I always figures that I'm around to take things. Mm. So I just take over and do things as I see fit. I'll get the bacon and eggs. You haven't much more time to catch a train, Mr. Norton. I've been working on the railroad. I wish she'd get off of that railroad or at least go on <laughs> to the next stop. Maybe she'll sing another song tomorrow. Unless, David, you really think she'll stay? At least till tomorrow? <laughs> I think she'll stay all right. <laughs> the only question is whether there'll be room for us to stay, too. David's headed for the railroad every live long day. Woo, woo. What if the family invited friends to drop in this evening? Would you have to scurry around trying to find refreshment to offer them? If you had plenty of Coca-Cola on ice, you wouldn't have to think twice about company, expected or unexpected. For ice cold Coke invites people to make themselves at home. It offers everyone the pause that refreshes, and that includes the hostess, too. How's your supply of Coke? And you better order a carton or a case today. Say, Mr. King, I think everything's going to work out fine. I'll bet it is, Gertrude. Claudia and David have been looking far and wide for someone like you to help them out. And I'm the one to do that. Things are going to hum in the Norton home with Gertrude around. <laughs> they'll not only hum, they'll crow. Who's going to do the crowing? Who usually does. A rooster, of course. A rooster? I've seen a cat and a dog around here, but no rooster. Come around tomorrow, Gertrude, and you'll see a rooster. An eaten rooster? Well, he was bought to be eaten, but you know Claudia. Well, I'll get around tomorrow to find out. So long, Mr. King. Goodbye, Gertrude. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya and Roger Starr. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.